Okay guys, this is Drew here, back to our Phase 3 GTHO engine build. Uh, this segment we'll be talking about uh, the mainly the pistons and rods. Now that we have the crankshaft installed, the camshaft is installed, all of the clearances for the, uh, the crankshaft <coughs> are within spec. Um, and the crankshaft turns out very nicely. The, uh, the crankshaft also has the two-piece rear main seal. Uh, it didn't come out with a two-piece rear main seal from the factory. Um, however, uh, they came out with a rope seal. But uh, we're making sure that uh, we don't have any issues with a rope seal. So we'll be putting the uh, two-piece aftermarket rear main seal in. And... Uh, so everything's fine with the short motor, uh, sorry, with the crank install. We'll continue with the rest of the build, build on the short motor. And so we'll just turn this over. And uh, if you can see, maybe you can see the, uh, the, the shape of the D in the top of the block. And... Uh, Remember, we spoke about this as being an identifying feature of the first generation block, uh, which has this D shape here at the front. So, uh, anyway, let's move on. Just make sure that's not going to fall out. Now, over here, I have the con rod and the piston. Let's talk about the Conrod first. Now the Phase 3, like I've mentioned uh, in, early, in uh, I think the first episode maybe, is that the Phase 3 did not have uh, any particular special type of Conrod. It had the regular production run 351 Cleveland Conrod, which is uh, it's 5.78 inches long. And this is a fine example of uh, one of those Conrods. The part number is DOAE-A, and so that just means it's a regular 351 forged steel conrod. Now, uh, the Boss 351 uh, was the only Cleveland to have a special conrod, and that had a part number of DIZX, and it, uh, it's, it's part of the forging here, so you can't miss it, and the Phase 3s did not have that conrod. However, what made the Phase 3 uh, a little different in respect to the Conrod was that forward fitted special uh, Conrod bolts. They were a, a, a higher strength, higher tensile uh, Conrod bolt. And so they were fitted. And uh, you can find those part numbers. Good luck trying to find uh, a set. Um, so uh, they are identifiable. Uh, the, the factory conrods have a round uh, head on the bolt here, and this one does too. These head, these bolts have been replaced by a, uh, uh, a 180 uh, psi um, high tensile aftermarket bolt, and so or fastener, and uh, so the um, the factory, the genuine factory forward uh, bolts. Um, I don't know exactly what PSI or high tensile strength they may have been. I'm sure you could probably find out. But uh, however, we've done something similar to Ford. We've replaced the, the bolts with a, a stronger aftermarket bolt. So um, our, our Conrod is pretty much the same as would have come out in a phase three. We're staying true to the, uh, to the type of Conrod. So... Let's move on to the piston. The, the piston that Ford used in the phase three was a standard, this is in the, we're talking about the, the, the general road motor or the, the street motor that found, was found in the most common of the GTHOs. Uh, and that piston that was in those motors was a cast uh, aluminium piston and it was a flat top variety with two valve reliefs, just like this one. And uh, they had uh, the, the factory ones had a steel gusset insert 
Just around about here on either side of the gudgeon pin is actually a bridge to the gudgeon pin and it was cast into the aluminium during the, the manufacturing process and that strengthened the piston. Um, the factory pistons were a eutectic piston um, as opposed to the pistons that, that we're going to use in this phase three which is a ACL race series hyper eutectic flat top piston. Now these pistons are still cast. Uh, they're the, uh, the epitome of a cast piston. Um, they are actually uh, stronger uh, in, in some ways. They do not need the steel gusset and so this makes this piston just a little bit lighter and also it's, it's much stronger. If, uh, if you want to compare the, the strength of a cast piston to a hyper eutectic piston, imagine the difference between a, uh, uh, a, a laminated windscreen and just a, a regular windscreen. You find that uh, a, a, a laminated windscreen, um, if, you, if you hit it, it'll crack and um, you know it, it won't shatter into a million pieces. However, um, this piston's more like the, the regular type um, toughened windscreen, which you can hit uh, the windscreen an, an infinite amount of times until at a point it just gives up and shatters into a million pieces. I mean, if you hit it hard enough, yes, it will shatter uh, into a million pieces, literally a million. So um, uh, this piston can take a lot more abuse. Um, it, it can be just like that, that uh, toughened windscreen. It can be hit an infinite amount of times uh, until it eventually will break. But uh, unlike the, the laminate windscreen, you know, you just have to hit it with a small rock and it, and it, it, uh, it cracks and that crack can, can mean the demise of the, 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 demise of the windscreen. But anyway, that, that's kind of like the comparison between a cast piston, a uh, eutectic piston and a hyper eutectic piston. Now, this is more current technology. So we'll be putting this piston in. This is a piston is a standard pin height. Uh, it, uh, it has just a normal uh, standard ring pack apart from uh, these particular rings uh, are a specific ring to this piston. They have a, a shallower radial depth and uh, they're a thinner ring than standard. So this is uh, like a, a, um, a slightly different, more current ring pack uh, and it'll ho hopefully seal the, uh, the compression a little bit better and uh, create maybe a little bit more horsepower but, but not a significant amount. So they're the pistons that we'll be putting in. Uh, these ACL ones are a uh, RA9351 uh, part number and so uh, we'll put them in. Next time you see the engine uh, we'll probably be putting the pistons and rods in. Oh one thing that, uh, that I ha don't know if I've mentioned yet or not, but um, when Ford uh, was, uh, I guess, uh, designing and, and creating these engines specifically to, for the phase three, uh, it, it seems as if they pulled apart a, a standard 4V type short motor, and then they used that as their base. And they got it down to a block just like this one is, and they, they took it to their machine shop, wherever that was, and they proceeded to mill an amount off the, the surface of the decks. Now, that was because they wanted to raise the compression and they wanted the piston to come up closer to the top of the deck and closer to the piston. And that, that effectively uh, decreases the amount of space between uh, the, the, the piston and in the combustion chamber. More squeeze means more compression. And so they, they wanted to raise the compression from approximately 10-ish um, uh, or maybe closer to 10 and a half to one up to 11 to 11 and a half to one. And they did this by machining the, the surface of the decks here, um, one thirty second of an inch, uh, approximately 30 thousandths of an inch. Um, so that meant that the top of the piston was very close to the top of the deck. Now they didn't want to 
probably bring it right up flush with the deck or even make it come out above the deck because they wanted to leave some space between the top of the piston and the flat part of the piston, uh, flat part of the, the uh, cylinder head combustion chamber. They didn't want the piston hitting the head because of course uh, during high RPM and high loads the con rod stretches and the piston grows taller and bigger especially the crown and so they didn't want to have uh, any issues there so they they probably left approximately um, five to ten thousandths of an inch of space or deck height between the top of the block and the top of the piston so uh, that's it for the pistons and rods at this stage so we'll see you next episode